Hi, I'm Julia. On this channel, I'm going to look at the issues facing our environment and our health. With the best of my ability, I'll summarise and share my review of the evidence with you. In this first episode of a series on physical activity, I'll look at our human history to discover some insights into why being physically active is good for human health. And then I'll delve into some contemporary environmental influences that can affect our behaviours and either promote or deter our participation in physical activity. We all know that physical activity is good for our health. In fact, it's so good that the US government has developed evidence-based physical activity guidelines to help us understand and achieve activity levels that are likely to provide health benefits. The guidelines recommend that adults engage in at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity and in addition that they engage in muscle strengthening activities on two or more days each week. Aerobic refers to the kind of activity that maintains an increased heart rate. It's often called cardio. Unfortunately for our health, most of us don't meet the guidelines. Only about 20% of adults, that's one in every five of us, meet both aerobic and muscle strengthening recommendations. So why do our bodies function best when we move? Likely, the answer is because, as a species, we probably spent most of our existence being a lot more active than we are today. We evolved over a period of five million years, from the appearance of the first early hominids to becoming modern-day humans, Homo sapiens, somewhere around 200,000 years ago. Since separating from the apes until modern times, we had to move about to gather, scavenge or hunt for our food. We rely on farmed foods now, but humans only started farming recently, about 10,000 years ago, perhaps when the climate became stable enough to allow for farmed crops to be grown reliably. But even after this agricultural revolution that changed us from hunter-gatherers to farmers, most of us had to engage in hard physical labor to survive. The next big change in our existence came with civilization. The first large-scale civilizations with cities and complex societies dependent upon agriculture for food came about a mere 5,000 years ago. It's a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, and most of us continued in work that demanded hard physical labor. When the Industrial Revolution began, only about 200 years ago, machinery and technological developments transformed our living and working environments again. This big change in our existence brought about the widespread use of fossil fuels and the use of fossil fuel altered our environments once more. As the Industrial Revolution progressed, many more people moved to cities. Farm machinery and industrialized agriculture has led to a decrease in the number of people employed in manual farm labor. And in the very recent past, over just about the last 30 or so years, our time spent sitting has increased more thanks to cars, computers, television and the internet. For many of us, our work contributes to our sedentary existence. It's estimated that Americans spend about 39% of their workday sitting, although this varies depending on your job. For example, welders spend 90% of their day standing or walking, and at the other end of the spectrum, software engineers spend 90% of their day sitting. For the greater part of human history, we existed with different environmental challenges to those that we face today. For most of human history, we were actively looking for our food, and our current level of sedentary behavior is a phenomenon of the modern-day developed world. Like other animals, we humans carry the biological adaptations to the environments in which we evolve. Over time, new genetic mutations arise randomly, and these random mutations sometimes provided us with the biological adaptations that allowed us to survive environmental challenges of the past. We evolved with traits 
rates for energy storage and movement, for being physically active, for running and walking, gathering food and evading predators. We didn't evolve to sit. So how does our physiology respond to our modern changed environment? Well, unfortunately, when it comes to physical activity, it seems we are adversely affected by our modern environment. What does the evidence tell us about environmental influences that can either promote or deter us from being physically active? Given that 80% of Americans don't meet the recommended activity guidelines, there must be many barriers out there. Modern technology has changed our daily activity to use our own cars to get about. Especially in America, suburban neighborhoods developed around car ownership as the primary mode of transportation without sidewalks or public transport. In Europe, where cities tend to be less spread out than in the USA, walking, cycling, and public transport use account for about 26 to 67% of all trips compared to just 12 to 13% in the USA. If you live in rural America, you're less likely to be active than if you live in an urban area. Researchers are not sure why, but it may be due to the lack of walkable destinations or to economic reasons, which mean people don't have the time or resources to devote themselves to leisure time physical activity. But if you live in safe neighborhoods that have pleasant scenery with sidewalks or with accessible trails and parks, you're more likely to be physically active. Other positive environmental influences on your likelihood of being active are being around less traffic and availability of destinations that can be reached by walking. The type of work that you do has an impact on your levels of activity, depending on how sedentary the job. But work can influence how much you are likely to be active in other ways. These include whether or not your work has a health promotion program or wellness team, and the work environment too, such as other stairs that are lit and usable, does your work have exercise facilities? Are there safe and lit parking lots? So you evolved in a very different environment to that in which we live today. So what can you do about it? The natural condition is one of insurmountable obstacles on the road to imminent disaster. So what do we do? Nothing. Strangely enough, it all turns out well. How? I don't know. It's a mystery. Shall I kill him, Mr. Freniman? The changes can be made to government policies that can help us to be more active. You can advocate for safe neighborhoods, for parks, for bike paths and sidewalks in your city. Perhaps you can ask your employer to change your worksite practices and policies to help you be more active. Consider if you have the option to choose walking or biking over driving your car. If you are driving and you feel safe, park at the furthest point you can from your destination and walk for a few minutes. You could, while waiting for a train, not stand but walk up and down the platform. Whenever you can, take the stairs. Try and find ways to be active despite our modern environment. In the next few episodes, I'll examine the evidence for the many health benefits of being physically active. If you want to research further into this topic, I've included a list of references in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like the video and subscribe to Your Care Plan on YouTube. And if you've already subscribed, thank you. Please share your comments and let me know if there are future topics that you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.